What's going on guys, it's Panati coming at you with another video. This one is a uh, part two of the one from the other day when I was giving advice for boot camp for either uh, people who are going through boot camp or uh, like friends that you have that are going through boot camp, people that have went through boot camp, you don't know what's going on next. Um, I'm here to kind of talk about that today. So we all know that your first step is to enlist, go to boot camp, and after boot camp you go on your... Uh, what they call their 10 day boot leave and uh, that's basically where you just go home for 10 days and uh, you don't really get a choice it's you go home for 10 days which is actually it's really cool uh, when I went home on my 10 days I got to uh, attend my high school graduation so I graduated in December as uh, some of you may know and I um, went to boot camp February came back May 11th or 12th or somewhere over there and then I uh, graduated, well, walked with the class on May 14th. And I got to do that in my dress blue alphas, and that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, uh, if you guys were wondering what happens next after those 10 days, it's actually the fastest 10 days of my life. Um, basically what happens after that is you go through what's called MCT or Marine Combat Training. And that's actually, it's only a month long, it's five weeks, four or five weeks. Uh, you can ring your phone, however, they uh, will most likely confiscate it at the beginning. Some, depending on your company, will allow you to have it in on the weekends, or you, some companies make it to where you have to have it at the end. Like mine, uh, we had to wait a couple weekends, but uh, eventually we ended up getting our phones on the weekends, and there was a whole fiasco. People got caught with phones when they weren't supposed to have them, and then people got in trouble. Lucky for me, if you do the honest thing, um, like a lot of times you're not penalized for it like the guys who had their phones and got in trouble for it they're the ones that got in trouble I got to keep mine because I gave mine in when they told me to turn it in and uh, anyway so let's uh, let's cover what happens in combat training so the first day you get there you kinda well, you like to check in your analysis progress so you go in Kind of like boot camp, the first day you go in, kind of find out where you live, get settled in, kind of learn the ground rules. Go, uh, you find out what platoon you're in. There are usually three. There were three when I went. Sometimes there's four, which would be first, second, third, and fourth. And for me, what they had was first, second, third, and overflow, which was all the like all the squad base got full, and so they uh, they sent people to their own like little squad bay where 4th platoon would be but we didn't have enough for an entire platoon and basically if you guys don't already know what a squad bay is so like if you're a family member or a friend or you just have no idea um, it's, it's basically like this big concrete room it's got just tons and tons of beds or racks whatever you want to call them in there and uh, just everybody shares that living space uh, MCT is a little better. Instead of a foot locker, you got a wall locker, which is uh, it's like this big, like shelf thing. And you get to put all your uniforms in, your basically everything that you own, and that goes in that wall locker. At MCT, they don't do inspections, um, no uniform inspections. What they do do, however, is they get to take you out to these pretty cool little places that you're probably uh, aware of. They're uh, like firing ranges. So you have one that's, um, and I went to West Coast, so I'm going to be kind of talking about the West Coast a little bit because I don't know how the East Coast works. But at Camp Pendleton, uh, what you do is you uh, go, your first like big thing or test is you go on what they call it, the 10K, which is just a 10K hike. If you were East Coast for uh, boot camp, you probably don't know if you're East Coast for. Uh, MCT, same, you probably don't know because there's just not hills over there. But on the west coast, the 10K hike is basically just up a hill and down a hill. And then around the highway, you go off in this little section where what they call the hooches. And it's imperative that you guys on your 10 day leave uh, stay in shape, don't eat a lot of junk food. Uh, believe me, I found out the hard way, it comes back to bite you on the 10K. Now, uh, you still hike as a platoon. They don't do the whole 
Titer or AT&T, they don't do any of that. You just kind of hide, just follow the person in front of you. The slinky effect, however, still does kind of happen. The packs, they teach you how to pack it a lot better. Uh, one thing they taught us is um, if you, uh, the hip strap, if you un unclip it, it'll kind of allow some movement for your hips. It makes it easier to go up the hills. What I found worked best for me is if I undid the hip strap and the chest strap. That's what worked out best for me. However, you guys can kind of experiment or uh, build off of what you learned in boot camp. Uh, whatever helps you, just do whatever fits you because everybody's different. However, um, after the 10K, you get to the hooches. You're out in what they call the field for about a week. And basically, all you do is you hike up to the range, which is about a mile off. But for the first three days, you stay at the hooches. You kind of learn what you're doing at the range. Then when you go up to the range, you you get to like sleep outside on the, like, the little hillside thing. You all get like a like set up the pipeline or uh, rack city, whatever you guys called it. And boot camp is uh, basically how you sleep. Uh, you got your two people on your one hour fire watch, which guys, I know it sucks. Stay awake. Um, don't like complain too much about it because it's only an hour. I know here now. Uh, I just got here in North Carolina. And uh, weekend posts, I think, are only for the class ups, but they are 24-hour posts. So just enjoy that one-hour post. It's not as bad as you think. I know it sucks at the time, but you'll make it through it. Easy. But uh, building off of going up to the range, let's say there's about 300 of you-ish in, uh, in the company. You will dump about 500,000 rounds up on that firing range. There's day shooting, night shooting, uh, like buddy rush system, but you're uh, you're also firing. So you have you're firing, and then you go, and then they start firing. While the next person advances, they start firing. They advance. You go over that more at MCT, but you do stuff kind of like that where you're running, and your buddy over here is just shooting, and you shoot, and they run. It's actually really cool. It's fun. Um, the only thing that kind of sucks is you're always wearing a flak with sappy plates, which if you don't know, add like 20, 30 pounds to your flak. Um, you go right in the front, one in the back, and it kind of tugs on your shoulders. And However, if your guys get cold up in Pendleton, you can just take your fingers and stick them right in your flak, and it'll keep your fingers warm. Um, after range week, uh, you guys get to look forward to that. 15k hike, which is about, I think it was like uh, 12 miles, 12, 13 miles, something like that. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Um, also, before I go any further, uh, make sure you guys take a few seconds to like this video. Uh, uh, comment anything you want to see. Comment any questions you might have after the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. And we'll give you about five seconds right now to subscribe, turn on those post notifications. Drop a like. Ready? Go. Alright, hopefully you guys had a little bit of time to do that. Um, if not, you can always do it after the video, or you can watch some other videos to kind of catch up on that. However, let's get back to MCT. So, the 15K hike is actually, uh, it's not as hard as the 10K is, because once, once you're uh, once you're up on the range, or on, like I said, you're kind of on a hillside, you're always going up and down the thing with the sappy plates, you're always moving around, kind of conditioning your legs. So when you go back, I highly encourage uh, staying in shape now when your 10-day leave, and also when you get there, the 10K will be easier. Not only that, but the 15K will be much easier. I know I struggled on the 10K, and when I did the 15K, which is actually up a much steeper hill for a longer distance, it's way easier to do, way easier. You're going to have guys that fall out, uh, don't try to push them, you can try to kind of motivate them, but if they're falling back, don't stay back there because it's not worth you going down under because it's kind of, if a hike is like an individual effort, of course you're there as a team, but you yourself need to make it to the top of the hill. And there are breaks throughout these hikes. Like on the 10K, you get to the top of the hill, there's a break, you get down to the bottom, that's where you stop, there's not really too many on that one, it's only like an 8 mile hike. Um, the 15k, excuse me, uh, 15k is you uh, go up to the top of the hill, take a break. Get down to the bottom of the hill, kind of go around this little bend, take a break. And you walk down, kind of past your uh, 
squad base, and you go down by the canal, and you come back, go up to your squad bay, that's it. Done. It's not too bad. Uh, I, like I said, highly encourage you guys staying in shape. Uh, don't eat like crap on your, uh, your 10 days. I also highly encourage you guys to have fun. Don't uh, think that uh, having fun and that only includes like going out and drinking with your buddies or playing video games or uh, like just going out and eating a bunch of food that you were craving in boot camp. It's not worth it, believe me. Um, if you go out to anywhere, make sure you're trying to kind of budget your money because it does help a lot once you uh, once you get further down the road, you get to your MOS schools and then eventually to the fleet. I personally, I'm not in the fleet yet because I'm still at my MOS school. I got an aviation MOS, I'm an aviation electrician technician, I'm avionics O level, which uh, I do 75% of what makes the plane work, however I'm also an electrician. But um, we can talk about that on a different video. Um, Basically what that means though is my MOS school or um, anyone else that's aviation has like a six month long-ish MOS school. However, my MOS school, since I got Harriers, which if you guys don't know what Harriers are, they're the, they're the planes that can hover and then take off. Um, that's, that itself is a six month C school and you go through ATT, which is a month, and then you go through Ostrand in Pensacola, which is... Uh, two months, so there's three months already, then six months, so that's nine months, and then there was that three months of boot camp and month of MCT, so that adds up to about 13 months, which is a little over a year, which is why my contract is a five-year contract versus some of you guys may have a four-year contract. Now, um, going back to MCT, after the 15K hike, you go there, uh, you get back to your squad base. After that, it's a lot of hurry up and wait until you guys kind of start to work with the 240 Bravos, you'll go to classes, you'll kind of learn how to do things here and there. The 240 Bravos are really cool. If you guys have played Battlefield 4 and you guys like to play the, the support class or whatever it's called in there, it's a big machine gun. It weighs itself with the tripod somewhere around, I, I think around 42 pounds, 42 to 60 pounds. Uh, if you know Correct me in the comments, I can't really remember, uh, it's been a few months since I've been to MCT. Um, but it's it's a fun gun to shoot. Uh, when you're there, you get to shoot it with uh, tracer rounds. So what that is, is you shoot, 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 shoot every like seven or so rounds. Uh, it releases one that you can track and it looks really cool. It's like watching uh, like Star Wars. Like you shoot and the little laser comes out and that's what it looks like. It's pretty interesting. Um, you do that so that way you can kind of adjust and then you'll be able to learn how to load it, unload it, reload it, uh, correct the malfunctions, you get to learn how to clean it, take it apart, change the barrel, and overall you learn how to fire it and then you guys get to carry it, then you guys also get to learn how to dig uh, foxholes, fighting holes, and uh, you also get to learn how to just kind of stand watch and uh, whatever else being out in the field kind of intakes but on another note uh, you get to learn how to breach houses throw grenades you get to learn how to kind of handle your m16 a little bit better you get to learn how to use nvgs which are night vision goggles you get to use an infrared uh, eye pack i think that's what it's called or peck uh, it's an infrared like laser and uh, you can only see it with your NVGs, which is actually really cool. However, the NVGs, it only covers one eye, and it's kind of difficult to see out of, uh, especially when you're moving. Um, and then the MCT stuff, like, you just take your test at the end. Uh, after that, you just kind of sit and wait for graduation. Graduation, if you're MCT, you graduate in camis. And after that, you can get your orders and go to your MOS schools. And if you guys have any other questions about MCT, just uh, comment down in the comment section down there below. Leave a like on this video, subscribe, share to your friends. Um, I don't really have much else about MCT, guys. It's pretty straightforward. It's 
Pretty simple, just like boot camp, you'll meet some really good friends, you'll get some really cool experiences to tell your family about, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Deuces.